With Bitcoin at all time highs, we're really going to compare, is it better to invest in Bitcoin or Australian property in 2021? Keep watching. Hey guys, my name is Ravi Sharma and I'm the founder and buyer's agent here at Search Property. Thank you so much for joining me on yet another episode of Search Property TV. If you're new here, smash that subscribe button because a lot of you that are watching, about 60% of you haven't actually subscribed to the channel and it would mean the world to me. I obviously put a lot of time and effort into these videos. So if that's the least you can do, I would really appreciate that. Now it seems like Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, Ethereum, it seems like a lot to take in, but when mainstream media is kicking in and saying, look, Bitcoin has hit all time highs. We haven't seen these sort of figures since 2017 and when the bubble burst, it's interesting. A lot of people are maybe thinking, is now a good time to look at into, you know, maybe investing into Bitcoin or do I stick to my guns, stick to real estate this year? And of course, why would you come here and not expect me to talk about real estate? So in this video, I'm going to share with you my thoughts on both Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and Australian real estate and how both are similar but also the pros and cons of investing into each. Now of course none of this is financial advice however it's just important to know that there's a place you can come to a reliable source of information where you are able to really just compare have some extra knowledge. Now at the end of this video make sure to watch because I'm going to share with you my thoughts on Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and how I think you could sort of leverage both and what I think we could be doing this year. Now Australian real estate in 2020 was expected to fall by 30%. However, it didn't do that. In fact, it not only did it not decline by 30%, it actually had a net return higher at about 6% across 2020, which is, you know, I guess people losing their mind when they heard that because they were like, well, I was hoping not to do that and it would crash by 30%. So I could actually make some property purchases and buy my home and, you know, get property at 30% off. No, it wasn't going to happen. However, there was an asset that actually performed better than this and it was Bitcoin. Now, a lot of people have their particular thoughts around Bitcoin, cryptocurrency. Some people just say it's rubbish without actually knowing what it is. And if I was to say it's about blockchain technology and there's a lot to this and moving forward, we're going to have to rely on this sort of technology. People are going, oh, I don't know what that means, but I'm not going to invest in Bitcoin. And that's fine. Look, if you don't want to invest in Bitcoin or you do, that's completely up to you. But why not stick around and actually see what the differences are? So let's start off by looking at the pros and cons of investing into real estate first. Pros, cash flow plus capital growth, long-term proven growth, there's more control, and there's the ability to add value and manufacture equity. The cons is that it's not very liquid, there's a high capital for entry, and it's a more active investment. So what I mean by this as an overarching sort of thought on real estate is that you do get the element of cash flow and high amounts of it and you are able to actually leverage your money to purchase property. So banks are more than happy to lend even up to 90, 95% of the complete value of a property when you're actually investing. So actually using a small amount of capital to earn and you know have a larger portfolio in terms of the asset itself is a huge benefit. Now, of course, when we look at the cons, that is also alternatively where there's an issue because if you're unable to get a loan and you don't have the borrowing capacity, well, that means you can't buy the property. And if you need a deposit, it needs to be quite considerable in size. If we're even looking at say 10% of a $300,000 property, well, you're starting off in terms of your deposit needs to be at least $30,000. You have some other costs that you also need to look out for. You know, you've got contracts, you've got conveyances, you're looking at inspections, so you need to do those, and you've also got stamp duty. Now, when we look at Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, we need to look at the pros and cons before really deciding what's a really better option here in 2021. The pros for Bitcoin, it's a peer-to-peer -peer system. It is a very liquid investment. It's hedge against inflation, and there's lower barriers to entry. The cons are that it's not a tangible asset. It's filled with speculative investors, which in turn means it's a very volatile market and there's no government regulation. So guys, from the perspective of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, yes, we've seen an amazing amount of growth this year. In fact, we've seen in 2020, 226% growth in Australian terms. So that is massive. But when we're looking at the high sort of risk associated with Bitcoin, it really makes you question, is it a really good investment in 2021? 
on its own, it seems like a pretty good investment when you're making 200% returns on it. However, we need to see what is Bitcoin? What is cryptocurrency? Now, I'm not an expert in this sort of stuff, but I understand it enough to have invested into it. Now, I do have a portfolio in cryptocurrency and I'm gonna continue growing that this year. There's nothing that I hide away from in terms of diversification. So I do love real estate and that will always be my number one baby because I've made all my wealth through real estate. Now in 2021, where I'm diversifying, I have invested into cryptocurrency and invested quite a bit, but now I'm also looking at growing that investment. I really believe in blockchain technology and I think there's going to be huge amounts of changes in terms of the next five to 10 years. And I think Bitcoin or cryptocurrency in a whole is definitely gonna play a part in all of that. So I wanted to actually sort of give you an example here, because if you're in a position where you could afford either, It'd be interesting to see what happened 12 months ago and if you were to go in and actually purchase Bitcoin versus purchasing real estate, what those numbers actually look like. So let's jump into that. So let's say at the start of 2020, you invested $50,000 into Bitcoin. That would now, 12 months later, be worth 103,500. Now, if we invested that same $50,000 into buying property, we would be eventually able to buy a property worth say $450,000. Now the average return was 6%. That would give you a return of $27,000. However, that's the average and our client's average growth in 2020 was 9.1%. So definitely above the market average. And that return would actually be just shy of $50,000. So I guess in that example, we're really just comparing both and we would see a very similar sort of return in terms of a dollar value. Now, percentage wise, obviously the percentage was a lot higher with Bitcoin, but the reason the numbers are so close together is because you're using that based on your just your capital versus when you come to real estate, it's your capital leverage in order to get a bigger asset. That is the fundamental reason why I think with property, if you have that sort of cash available, you might be better off going into investing into real estate versus something like Bitcoin, which is so volatile. When you're starting out and you're building that foundational wealth, you're probably better off sticking to things that have a proven record, a growth sort of trend that comes with real estate. And of course it addresses the number one need, which is shelter. So it's very much, a stable sort of investment, in my opinion, of course I'm biased here. However, with Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, if I'm investing into it, I'm not gonna shy away and say it's crap because I actually believe it is going to play a large factor in the future. Now, am I saying go and invest in Bitcoin and put all your money into it, sell your houses that you have to buy it? No. I'm not gonna be doing that either. And that's purely because that's my choice. That's my strategy. I would prefer not to take those types of risks. Is it going to perform a lot better? Maybe. But even with property, if you're buying in the wrong areas, you could get smashed. In our example, if my clients are getting 9.1%, but the average was about 6%, then you've really just gotta see what weighs out better. If you're picking the right areas with the right team or the right research really behind you, then I think real estate's gonna do well for you. However, I'm gonna be investing in both in 2021. I think that was fairly obvious based on what I've just said in this video. And I think if you don't understand what cryptocurrency and Bitcoin is, if you don't wanna spend the time researching, don't FOMO in, don't just go and put money in there thinking, oh, it can never go down because that's the mentality a lot of people had in 2017. And we all know what happened there where a lot of people lost a lot of money. I think if you're gonna go into something and invest, Definitely research about it, understand it. And if you truly believe in the technology, then you should definitely invest. Guys, thank you so much for watching another episode of Search Property TV. I do appreciate your support. If you can kindly subscribe and let me know in a comment down below, is it Bitcoin or is it real estate? Just state it, I would love to know. And of course the YouTube algorithm will help out, you know, push this video out to the people that need it. So I really do appreciate you being here and spending your time here. Again, a quick note, if you haven't already, enroll into Confusion to Clarity. It's an online course I've created, which is a complete step-by-step -step guide. That's as much as I'm gonna say. You can check it out in the link description. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks guys.